Who is she? Where did she get that? Is money? she cool? Is she cute? Is this horror? Is this a stunt? Is this exploitation? This has to be satire. Where are the parents? Has the internet gone too far this time? To ask these questions, though, is to miss the point, because with Lil Tay, the most interesting questions circle around our idea of online reality. What we perceive of the lives lived on Instagram, how we process them, how we develop attachment to them. It is not so much a window into the soul, but a magnifying glass, amplifying light into a burning beam, setting things on fire. The question is not so much, who is Lil Tay, but why? is Lil Tay, and why do we find this kind of internet culture so fascinating? Hello everyone and welcome back to a new video. My name is Leon Lush and I really appreciate you taking a few minutes of your time to spend here with me today. Now a little over a month ago I made an insufferable Instagram which is a, a series I do here on YouTube about certain Instagram personalities. Um, I made one on Lil Tay who at the time had around 250,000 followers. Beach, if y'all turn What the? F okay, all right. <laughs> uh, just looking at Lil Tay's account, she has 254,000 followers, which is pretty significant. In the time since, uh, has just gone on to astronomical levels of kind of internet notoriety and has really become this kind of cultural phenomenon of sorts. All y'all grown ass men hating on a nine year old? No, that's not what we're doing today, Lil Tay. It's just not what we're doing. I know there's been plenty of hate sent your way. But you're nine years old, and that fact alone, when I made this video over a month ago, I was very careful in the way I, I made the jokes and, and approached the satire of the whole situation. And now, today, it's not about hating, it's more just like reveling in the intrigue of, of what this is. How has this become such a thing? How has Lil Tay gone from 250,000 followers a month ago to 1.9, almost 2 million followers now on Instagram? Now this defiant, bitch you a broke ass hoe, money flexing, lavish lifestyle personality on the internet is no new thing. You have your bad babies, you have your woe vickies. But with Lil Tay, it's her age. It's the fact that she's nine years old that makes this such a spectacle. Now collectively as humans, I feel like we have this perceived notion of kids that they have this innate innocence, right? That they're still young, they don't know what's going on, they're learning so much all the time, and they're growing into who they're eventually going to become as an adult. And when you see someone like this that's so abrasive, it kind of it works directly against the perception we have of what children are supposed to be. Y'all haven't seen this car in your lives. I'm out here flexing and all y'all broke ass haters. I got a $350,000 chain. Y'all haven't seen this in your lives. I'm richer than all y'all broke ass haters. Y'all grown ass men hating on me because y'all broke and jealous. Y'all rappers out here, I ain't even started rapping yet, but I'm richer than you, bitch. She is various strands of our online existences all rolled into one small thing. Figure. Life for the benefit of the camera, online life as a performance, the horror of other people's lives, our fascination with them, our distaste at rapidly lowering barriers of entry to the shallow world of celebrity, our grim moralistic engrossment with the tastes of the working class, the hip hop aspirational trap realism, the internet's tendency to refine everything into a cute, gross dichotomy. All this combines in Lil Tay. We now have a scrappy and shocking, if not kind of adorable, nine year old girl performing a hip hop pastiche live for us on our phone. Now, I'll be honest, I had to Google what pastiche meant. I'm just happy I got the pronunciation right on the first pass. This is a whole new world of celebrity that is perpetuated by an internet culture that is so fast to jump on things that are trending upwards. You type Lil Tay into YouTube and there's already over 7 million results. This is a girl who was basically non-existent just a few months ago. It's like this, it's this new model where there's a, a spark, like a little spark created by someone doing something outlandish or someone doing something that's outside of our comfort zone. And when we see that spark, we collectively as writers and video makers and pundits, we jump on that spark and we fan it into a massive fucking forest fire. We, and again, this is a collective we, are the people, are the vehicle that make these outrageous personalities famous. And it's no secret that when a phenomenon like this happens, everyone starts talking about it because you look around and you see some of these YouTube channels that aren't that big getting two, three, four million views on a six, seven, eight minute commentary video. And wherever we go, we can change really? the weather. Oh shit, Lil Tay can control the weather? God damn, Avengers Infinity War just got way more interesting. Come on here quick. 
Risk game. But don't forget the money, Savannah. You can dance all you want, but you better fucking flash that cash, son. And you'll constantly see people saying, oh, I'm so sick of this. If we only stopped talking about her, she'd fade into irrelevance. Yet, if you look at the statistics, this is the kind of content that people are consuming the most. You want to make an original song or a funny skit or a sketch that has nothing to do with anything popular or trending at the time? That's fantastic. It feels great. Artistic integrity, all that shit. Enjoy getting no fucking views. You want to have a chance to blow up and make a ton of money on YouTube? You have to start talking about the shit that people are consuming. You're wearing Gucci from head to toe. Y'all can't afford this shit. This shit costs your whole brand. <laughs> Where's Chief Salsa? I'll be wearing new yeah, right. fresh Nike. Y'all be wearing cheap ass shit like hand me downs and shit like that. Where are Lil Tay's parents? People want to know. Where's she getting all this money? Does Lil Tay talk normally? Is this just a stick? Is this satire? Is this just an act? Or is she really like this? Those are questions that have been ruminated over through millions of hours of online content. We've seen things about Lil Tay's mother, how she had to leave her real estate job because we found out that Lil Tay was actually using clients, her mother's clients' cars in million dollar homes to make these videos. So, so it seems rather obvious that Lil Tay is a direct exploitation of our societies, our culture's obsession with this kind of content. Maybe we should have a moment of quiet reflection, a little existential crisis of our social worlds. There's some soul searching needed here. The gamification of life on Instagram, accumulation of likes and followers, leads to us all exploiting ourselves to certain extents. Lil Tay throws that exploitation into new light, or at least it should. The truth is, this proliferation of these self-made internet reality stars is is here to stay. It's a large, it's a huge part now of the new age of media. And you can hate it all you want, but that is the great paradox of this situation. The fact that those who hate it the most are the very ones who are perpetuating its existence. And can you blame these young kids who are coming up, maybe coming from a poor background, looking around them on the internet, seeing these people like Boom Gang, these bad babies, little Tays, blowing up, making all types of money by just being a fucking asshole or some sort of outrageous piece of shit on Instagram? Of course they're gonna do the same thing and follow suit. Ethically, it sucks, and I don't like it. These Instagram personalities acting like assholes are breaking the law to get views. I don't like it personally, but I get it. I understand why they do it. Because it works. And you and I are part of the reason why it works so well, so we can hate Lil Tay all we want. But let's stop pretending like it's going anywhere, like this type of personality is going away, because we are at the beginning of the social media boom. It is only going to get exponentially worse. I can't even imagine what it's going to be like in 10 years from now. But wherever the fuck we end up, you best believe that Leon Lush is going to be right there trying to scrape a few views off the bottom of the barrel to help pay for his mortgage. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. <laughs> Guys, I'm so sorry. I just realized I missed some very important parts of this video. First of all, whoop, that dildo dodge. And secondly, if you could just cut your toenails, grab a piece of American cheese and wrap your toenails and then American cheese and force feed it to your dog and then hip thrust that motherfucking like button for me. I'd greatly appreciate it. And be sure to leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think about this situation. Are you glad it's here? Or you want to see it die? It's here to stay, baby. You better get used to it. Anyways, uh, thanks, for, thanks for engaging and interacting and watching. You guys are the best. Peace.